today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get a really cool transition effect using the POV mode on the Juin Weeble S gimbal. Now this is a very technical in-camera shot or in-camera effect with a little bit of, you know, tweaking in Final Cut. So make sure you do follow along because it takes a lot of concentration, focus, and overall I need to show you how to hold the gimbal. So to start off, make sure that each of your motors are properly balanced. I have a ton of tutorials on how to balance the Weeble series gimbal, so make sure you check it out right here. If you don't balance your gimbal properly, this transition effect will not work. Next, make sure that your tripod is mounted on the bottom of the gimbal. Then enable POV mode. Now when comparing the shot to the Inception or Vortex shot, you get a much wider radius when we turn the camera. So these two shots are completely different, and you're gonna see how in this video. Next, make sure that you place your right hand on top of your left and with an inverted upside down grip. As seen here, this is exactly how you need to hold the gimbal because as we turn, you need to make sure that your other hand can keep the rotation going. Also make sure that your center mark is on on your camera and your leveler. That way you can start and end your shot level. Also make sure that you're shooting at 24 frames per second. Your rotation shouldn't be that fast. So motion blur is key here. This is how we're gonna mask the transition and flow it into the next location. Now, make sure you do the rotation in one location, full 360 degree movement, and then go to your next location, do that same exact shot in the same exact rotation. So you wanna keep your speed consistent, 24 frames per second, don't forget that's important, and keep that motion blur. So you should be shooting at 1 50th shutter speed, possibly with an ND filter if you're shooting outside. I'm using the Sandmark ND filter here, and we'll talk about that later in another review video. I have a very solid stance, all right? My chest, abs are flexed. I wanna keep that rotation going at a very consistent speed. My arms are supporting the gimbal. I have a very tight grip on the handle, so that way it won't slip. Now, you're not gonna get the shot straight off the bat. It took me a while to get the rotation right because sometimes the gimbal tries to self-level and it trips out a little bit so make sure that you keep practicing it all depends on the speed as well the speed the slower you go the more accurate the shot will be but don't go too slow now let's go into our video editor and I'll show you how to piece all of these shots together. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. Don't worry if you're an Adobe Premiere Pro user because this will work with that software as well. So I'm gonna find my first clip here. Now I know that some of you are gonna be asking what is the major difference between the Vortex shot and the uh, POV shot? Well, it's actually the radius of the circle that you're flipping your camera. I know without a model in my video, it's kind of difficult to tell the difference, but I guarantee you there is a major difference. So try shooting with both the vortex and POV mode on the same shoot and you'll see that difference. If I had models in my shots, it probably would have been easier to tell the difference, but believe me, when you start shooting, you'll see that difference. So I'm gonna trim this clip here, right about here. I grab it and then I do a flip. Now, because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, we get that beautiful motion blur, and that motion blur is what's gonna mask our transition and make it seamless into the next clip. So, you don't wanna be shooting at a higher frame rate because that means you have to shoot at a higher shutter speed and we lose a lot of that motion blur. Unless you want slowed down footage, don't do it. And honestly, with these types of shots, they shouldn't be that slow. So I'm gonna trim that clip. I'm gonna bring up my next clip, which is in another location. Here's the LA River. Isn't it beautiful, guys? It's just so polluted and gross. So notice how this last clip here ends at somewhat of a 90 degree angle. Actually, let me push it a little bit further down. I wanna end it at a 90 degree angle, which is about here. You can tell with the horizon line, it's almost perfectly straight right here. So that horizon line is gonna help us out with guiding the transition. All right, so we're gonna go to this clip here. I'm gonna wait for the flip. And here it is. Here's our horizon flipped. And now we wanna go a little bit past 90 degrees. That makes for a seamless transition, but notice that my motion blur is not nearly as much as the last clip. Isn't that funny? It looks like I accidentally hit the shutter speed or maybe I just wasn't spinning the camera as fast. Not to worry, we're gonna add artificial motion blur to this clip. That way it makes it seem more seamless. So all we're gonna do here 
is we're gonna actually add some speed ramping to increase that motion blur and to make it even more seamless. So this is very, very similar to the vortex transition shot. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the last few moments of this clip here and let me see if I even need to speed it up. Let's see how seamless it is right now. That's actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We can probably make it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in by pressing Command Plus on my keyboard here. It's gonna zoom in on my timeline. In the last few moments of this clip, I probably want to speed it up. So maybe like right about here, I'm gonna press on the blade tool, split that clip. Then I'm gonna go up here to the speed ramper, click on fast, maybe make it four times. Then I'm gonna to go to the next clip and I wanna make sure that the speed is consistent. So I'm gonna apply the same type of speed ramp to this clip as well. Now I'm gonna add some of my motion blur here. I'm gonna start it a little bit before the speed ramp and a little bit after. And boom guys, that's how you create that transition. It's as easy as that. It all has to do with the timing, positioning of the camera, speed, that's very important, consistency of that speed and the consistency of that movement. Remember, if you're flipping right, you wanna continuously keep flipping right. I also learned that I only flipped once at each location. You wanna flip at least twice, that way you can easily transition into the next clip and the next clip until you hit the last clip. All right guys, I hope this video has helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions and subscribe with those notifications turned on. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.